Today we're going to be talking to you all about Chapter 6, Creativity, Event Planning with Panache. This is presented to you by Sarah Mass, Melissa Marks, Zoe Coleman, and Kristen McNabb. So all of us daydream in class all the time, and while most of the professors think that you're wasting time and you're not paying attention, we're going to talk to you guys about why it's actually fostering your creativity and why it's important to do this regularly throughout your lifetime. A couple of the topics we're going to be talking about today are creativity, the definition of this, and diving a little deeper into what it means to be creative. Fostering creativity, why it's important to continuously foster your creativity throughout your lifetime and how this can help you later on. Creativity in the environment, school environment, work environment, anywhere you're at, it's important to be creative in multiple different ways. The creative process, this differs for everybody and we're really going to talk to you guys about how we're all different and why that's important and how this process could be different. These are just a few of the main ones that most people have. And barriers to creativity, and we're going to dive a little deeper on what exactly that means with barriers to creativity. So, what is creativity? Creativity is the development of ideas explained by new combinations or regrouping and restructuring elements that involve thinking. Pretty straightforward, what we all know about creativity. So what is the number one goal? To produce events that people will enjoy and remember. What's important here is that you know what the client wants, and most importantly, you know what the client needs. Sometimes clients may think that they want something that doesn't necessarily have a reason for it. They just want it, and they don't know why they want it. And it's important to work with them and understand what they really need instead of just what they want. In a, you know, appropriate way. Play with relative topics and themes. Everyone needs to be creative in their own event and their own theme, their own topic. Do some research on it. Dig a little deeper with the client and see what they like, what they dislike, till you find that perfect theme for them that you can really go big on for the event. So fostering creativity. This is really important when you're being creative because creativity is not just something that you're given at birth. You have to continue to foster it throughout your life. And this is really important, especially for de event design, because everyone needs to have different events. So you want to gather information from sources. This could be online, this could be the client themselves, um, who the client is planning this event for, it doesn't really matter. You need to get some information from outside sources. You can't just go into it with a closed mind. Organize so that you can work with the information. Staying organized with event planning is a huge, huge thing, because the minute you get unorganized, the event is going downhill. It's important to stay organized, to work with the client, for the client, and in the best way, time effectively possible. Lastly, take a break, walk away, and come back. We've all hit those walls when we're studying. We all know what that's like. Sometimes it's best to walk away, take a mental break, come back to it later, and you're gonna have way more ideas this way. Believe it or not, they've proven that taking a break from thinking improves your creativity. You're gonna come back rejuvenated and ready to go. So creativity within the environment. Okay, so creativity within the environment. We're gonna talk a little bit about what that means and um, yeah, what that means and how you can foster that in the environment. So you want to encourage innovation. That's something that's really important in environments, whether workplace environments, um, school environments, classrooms, whatever. You want to encourage innovation because if innovation, you, if innovation is being encouraged, people will be encouraged to be more creative and to try new things without feeling like if they fail, there's going to be huge consequences. So having an open-minded environment and allowing employees, event planners, um, vendors to participate in the creative process really creates a good team dynamic and it allows everyone to um, use their creativity in their own unique way and contribute to the event. Um, it can be done, it definitely can be done alone. You need a team to plan an event. Um, I know for like myself, like I am definitely much more of a like big ideas person. So I like to have whenever, you know, I'm planning things, I like to have someone who's more detail oriented to help me kind of keep organized and stay on track. Um, and the result will be that employees will be more motivated to stay committed to their work and to um, participate and put their best effort forward if they feel like they're like valuable and their creativity is important and it's needed on the team. You're gonna feel, if you feel valued, you're gonna feel like you wanna keep participating, keep giving, keep being creative because it's important. 
Um, so then also one thing we talked about was leverage humor, which uh, is definitely an interesting thing, but I think that's really important in fostering a good creative environment. Um, it can lighten the mood, it can decrease stress, and it fosters a culture of risk-taking, flexibility, and openness. So like when people are just laughing around and joking, it doesn't feel so stressful and serious where you're like, I have to come up with the best idea right now or everything fails. You feel like, okay, you know what? We're gonna take a chance on this and if it fails, oh well, we'll laugh about it. But if not, this could be the best idea ever. Um, managers make huge difference. So innovation and humor falls if managers promote and foster employees' creativity. Uh, obviously, you know, we talk a lot about in communication studies what it means to be a good leader and that applies to managers, that applies to event designers, everything like that. And fostering humor and openness really allows people to become the best that, that they can be, so. Like Michael Scott from The Office, but like turn down five notches. Yes, that one. <laughs> okay, so an excellent example of leverage humor is this top picture here where it says RIP McDonald's on a Burger King sign right across from the demolished McDonald's across the street. It really just gave people something to laugh about, maybe brought in some more business for Burger King because McDonald's is completely gone. Um, the other thing about these logos down here, Apple, Salesforce, and Tesla. These companies are really well-known companies. However, they are known for fostering innovation, creativity, um, encouraging their employees to always put their best ideas forward and maybe you'll see them on the next car or have them. So the creative process, we're gonna talk a little bit about the creative process. And again, like Zoe mentioned, these are just like general creative process steps. These aren't everyone's exact creative process. So don't feel like you have to be locked down into this. But first one to get your creative juices flowing, relax. Take a deep breath in, Woo, do something you enjoy, get your brain flowing. And that's where your best ideas are gonna come from. Cause if you're like stressed and you're like, I gotta get this in and it's gotta be good. You're just gonna come up with just the bare minimum, something you've seen before. But if you're just allowed to relax and really let your mind flow, you can come up with some really amazing stuff. Step two, um, immerse yourself with the client and the company and know their business and their culture. So attend their meetings, talk to their employees, hang out at their office, like get to know the company on like a more human level. Because one event that might work really well for one company is not necessarily gonna work well for another company. It doesn't mean it's a bad event, but it just means it doesn't fit the company's persona, what their, um, what their vibe is, you know, like every Gen Z person. Um, brainstorming, so come up with ideas, but don't feel like you need to make a decision then. So like, Come up with a bunch of ideas and make a decision later. Allow yourself the room to think about things and come up with different ideas, but not have to make a decision. Um, and step four is examine the idea versus the you know, six thinking hats, which we have a little picture up here of these thinking hats. So you gotta have your facts hat on, your emotion hat, your benefit hat, your ideas hat, your planning hat, and your judgment hat. All six of these little hats, you don't have to have actual hats, but like that'd be fun too. Um, all six of these metaphorical hats are important parts of creating an event and process. So you need to consider all of these when you're putting things together. Just swap them out, swap them out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so some barriers to creativity, so habits. Obviously, uh, a lot of people are creatures of habit. I'm kind of a creature of habit. We like our habits. They're comfortable, they're what we know. But a lot of times our habits can get in the way of creativity because you're not generating new events and new ideas. You're not, you know, even sometimes people say like the most creative people will just brush their teeth with their left hand or take a new way to work. And something as simple as that, just to break a habit can get your brain thinking again because it's not just going the same way it has been. So. That's something, and then blocks. So like, um, like blinds event planner from understanding and under, um, and then analyzing the problem and how to fix it. And then emotional. A lot of them can be emotional blocks. There are like situational blocks. So like you know time constraints of team members who aren't willing to help. But there are also emotional blocks like uh, fear of messing up, fear of take, taking risk, feeling like you're going to be a failure that it all rides on you. Just you know like little emotional blocks. We had a company um, who did a business conference at a science museum. It was a, just 
a business conference. But it was cool that they did it at the Science Museum. It was kind of a unique and creative way to get their employees out and looking at something different so that um, they could kind of like foster some new ideas and some creativity within their company, which I thought was really awesome. And especially because like in between talks, you go look at dinosaurs, which is cool. Um, and the other example was that they also had a carnival style uh, conference where they had like booths and rides and stuff instead of just like instead of just like a regular um what are those things called business conference setting business conference setting like the um the tabling and the you know you go up and you get your koozie that has their logo on it like this was something different and fun and cool and this is definitely going to be a business conference that people walk away remembering and that will stick with them they'll be like that was awesome like i want to do something cool with my business conference so that was definitely, those are two examples of ways to foster creativity and something that can be very ordinary. Um, so anyways, that's kind of our uh, presentation on creativity and some final thoughts that we wanted to take away, that we wanted you to take away from our presentation were try not to get stuck in your old ways and feel free to branch out and create different events out of, um, create different events even if you feel like you're going to fail, just go for it and really try to push yourself beyond your comfort zone because that's the place where you're going to be most creative and grow the best. So I hope you've learned a little bit about creativity. Uh, thanks for watching and um, go out there and do something new today. Bye!